After doing our opening activity on molarity, uh, we learned that molarity is a way of expressing a concentration of a, of a solution. And so we know that solutions um, are composed of the two parts. We've got that solute and we've got the solvent. And the solute is the thing that you're sticking in the, the, the uh, solvent to make the solution. So with concentration, we want to know how much solute is there in the total amount of solution. So we saw with that opener that the more solute you had, the more concentrated that solution came. Less solute you had, the um, less concentrated it came. So most reactions occur in aqueous solutions. We, we uh, learned that when we were looking at double replacement reactions where you had uh, two uh, compounds uh, dissolved in water and so in order to dissolve them they had to be soluble and we talk about solubility we say that uh, the substance goes into solution so it either dissolves or it dissolves and dissociates into ions so in order to make a solution you have to have something that's soluble and generally we're going to dissolve it in water because water is known as a universal solvent because it's so so polar <laughs> it is 12 o'clock. Okay, so in order to express the relationship between the amount of dissolved solute and the amount of solution, we're going to use that term molarity. And so molarity uh, is given the symbol of this capital M. And when you see that molarity, it means we're looking at the moles of solute over liters of solution. So not liters of solvent, liters of solution. So when you have a solution, we know we've got a certain amount of solute dissolved in there, but the solute plus the solvent gives us a solution, and that's what the solution is. So we want to know what is the ratio of the amount of these dissolved moles in that total amount of solution. And when you did the opening activity, you could see that... Um, certain substances were only soluble to a certain point and no matter how much more you added you wouldn't change the molarity because it has to be dissolved in solution so if you've got something that's saturated and it's piling up on the bottom the molarity of the dissolved portion doesn't change so if we're looking at a one molar solution of sodium chloride we would see that remember molar, one molar, one M, means you would have one mole of sodium chloride and it would be in one liter of solution. So uh, we'd have a, a one liter of solution containing one mole of sodium uh, chloride, so that's one molar. If you had a 0.5 molar solution, you would have 0 0.5 moles of sodium chloride in one liter. If you had a 12 molar solution of hydrochloric acid, that means you would have 12 moles of HCl in one liter. Okay, so anytime you see that big M, that means moles of whatever you have over a total liters of solution. So how many moles of barium chloride would there be in a 0 0.025 molar solution of barium chloride? So remember that big M means moles over liters. And so we have 0 0.025 big M moles over liters. So how many moles of barium chloride would there be? There would be this many moles, 0 0.025 moles. So how many grams of barium chloride are in 0 0.025 molar solution of barium chloride? So when we talked about that molarity, remember we said it was moles of your solute over liters of solution. But here we're not given moles, we're given grams. So this means we have to go to the Wayback Machine and we have to get out of grams of barium chloride and we have to get it into moles. And this is something you should be familiar with by now. So we're gonna start out with um, 0 0.025 moles of barium chloride and we want to know how many grams that is. So we need to look up on the periodic table the mass of 
one mole of barium chloride. So that means we need to see the mass of a barium and two times the mass of chlorine. So off the periodic table, we go and look up the mass of barium. And it has a mass of 137.3 grams per mole. And then we need to look up the mass of the chlorine. So part of the problem some of you might have is writing that formula. So remember, um, write it out the way you think the symbols are, barium and chlorine. Go back and check the oxidation numbers. And you'll see that barium is in group two, so it has a plus two. Each chlorine is a minus one. Do your crisscross. And so it's going to be BACL2. So we have to find two um, times the mass of the chlorine, which is going to give us 2 times 35.5, which is 71. So 71 plus that 137.3 gives us 208.3. So one mole of barium chloride has a molar mass of 208.3 grams of barium chloride. All right, so we're going to take that 0.025 and multiply it by that uh, molar mass, and that's going to give us 5.21 grams of barium chloride will be in that one liter of solution, and that's that concentration. So 0 0.025 molar solution of barium chloride is going to have 5.21 grams of barium chloride dissolved in that one liter of solution. So molarity, again, is moles of solute over liters of solution. Sometimes we won't be given liters. Sometimes you'll be giving a, a different unit of volume, or sometimes you'll be asked for a different unit of volume. So you have to remember your SI conversions. So this first one, that one cubic centimeter equals one mil, remember we said that if you took an object that was one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter on a side, so that would be one cubic centimeter, and you placed it in water, you would see that that one cubic centimeter object would displace one milliliter. So one milliliter and one cubic centimeter are the same. Different units, but they're expressing the same amount of volume. So uh, that means if you had a thousand cubic centimeters, that's a thousand mils. So a thousand mils we know is in one liter and there's a thousand cubic centimeters in one cubic decimeter. We don't use this a lot, but it's important that you know the relationship between these two. So let's try a conversion. How many liters are in 3,457 mils? So remember with your conversion factors, always start with what you're given. So we're given that 3,457 mil. And we want to get out of mils and we want to get into liters. So that means our unit of milliliters has to be on the bottom and liters is going to be on the top. So if you remember from your King Hector died uh, drinking chocolate milk, um, our unit of liters is an SI base unit and here's milliliters. So we're going to go uh, a factor of one, two, three times different. So that's a one with three zeros after it. So that means we have a thousand to one uh, ratio. So remember, you can you can put lots of little guys in one big guy. Mills are small, so that means for every one liter, you can cram into that a thousand mills. So do your math, and we'll come up with three point four five seven liters. And so that's what you'd have to convert to in order to um, plug it into your equation or answer the question of molarity. So here's the next one. How many liters are in 1,640 cubic centimeters? So what you need to remember is that one cubic centimeter is also equal to one milliliter. And if you have a thousand milliliters, you have one liter. So that relationship is important. So start with what you're given. We have 1,640 cubic centimeters. We know that if you had one cubic centimeter, that's the same as one milliliter. And if you have a thousand milliliters, that's the same as one liter. So now you go across and do the math and you end up with 1.640 um, liters in 1,640 cubic centimeters. Now, 
if you already see this relationship in your head and you don't need to do this part of the conversion, that's fine too. But just in case you weren't too comfortable with it, this is where these values came from. So here it is uh, worked out on the next slide. Now let's find the molarity. If we're given grams of solute and the volume of solution and we're asked for what is that concentration? What is the molarity of it? So here's our example. What's the molarity of 250 mils of a solution that contains 9.45 grams of sodium chloride? So to remember that molarity, we're looking at moles of the solute over liters of solution. But in this case, we're given grams of solute over mils of solution. So we have to do two conversions. We have to get out of grams into moles, and we have to get out of mils into liters so that we can write the uh, correct units for molarity. So we're going to set up the problem as a um, concentration problem, a, a, the grams of solute over the volume of solvent. And our goal is to get to the end here to have moles over liters. And so that's your end point. So that's what you're looking for. That means we've got to convert these grams into moles and the moles has to be on top. And we've got to convert these mils into liters and the liters has to be on the bottom. So first thing to do, write it up as that concentration. Okay, so let's do um, getting out of uh, grams of sodium chloride into moles first. You could do um, the milliliters to liters first. It doesn't matter, um, but just typically we take care of the grams into the moles first. So that means you need to go to the periodic table and you need to find the mass of one mole of sodium chloride. So 9.445 grams, if I had one mole of sodium chloride and I look this up on the periodic table, so I find the mass of sodium, find the mass of chlorine. I find that it comes up to be 57.5 grams. All right, now let's look at the units. If we look at the units here, we see that grams of sodium chloride over grams cancel, and I'm in moles. And remember, that was my end point. I want to have moles on top, and I want to have liters on the bottom. So we're halfway there. Okay, now let's take care of the volume. We're in mils and we want to get out of mils. So the unit milliliters has to go on top. And that means liters will go on the bottom, which is great because that's what we want to end up with down here. So what do you know about mils and liters? I know that if I had 1,000 milliliters, that's going to equal one liter. So let's put that conversion in. For every 1,000 mils, we have one liter. All right, now let's check those units. So we've got mils on the bottom here, and it's going to cancel with milliliters on the top there. Our grams are already canceled, and we're ending up with um, moles over liters, which is our final answer there. So we've got this uh, set correctly. So there we are getting out of grams into moles, and then the last step there is to convert mils to liters. So that 1,000 mils equals 1 liter. Now all we have to do is do the math. So we multiply across the top, and we're going to divide across the bottom. And we end up with 0 0.646 moles of sodium chloride in that 1 liter. And so we can answer that, too, by saying it's 0 0.646 big M, because that's the same as saying moles over liters. So here's our next example. Calculate the molarity of the following solutions. We're going to give a couple examples. Um, kind of pause this recording and see if you set this up correctly. And then come back and uh, we'll check your answer and see maybe where you went wrong. So remember, when we talk about molarity, we're looking at moles of solute over liters of solution. So that means our final answer, our units are going to be moles over liters, and so that's what we're going to uh, try to aim for. So we're going to write this as um, the amount of solute in the total amount of solution, which is what molarity measures, and in this case we've got 125.5 grams of calcium chloride, 
in 1,000 milliliters of solution. So we've got to get out of grams of calcium chloride into moles, but you've got to know how to write the formula for calcium chloride. So write them out, calcium, and then put your chlorine. Now go back to the periodic table and check their oxidation numbers. Calcium you'll see is in group two, so it's got a plus two oxidation number. Chlorine is all the way over in group 17, and so it has a minus one. So do your crisscross. For every one calcium, you're gonna need two chlorines. So we're gonna say it's CaCl2. So we want 125.5 grams of CaCl2, and we wanna get out of those grams and we wanna get into moles. That way, we'll have this unit taken care of. So off the periodic table, you find the mass of one mole of calcium chloride. So we look at one calcium, which uh, is with the two chlorines, comes out to be 111.0 grams of calcium chloride in one mole. So now look at the grams units, they cancel, and we're in moles, and moles is on the top, so we're halfway there. Now let's take care of this volume. And so that's your conversion. So what do you know about mils and liters? We know that if you had 1,000 mils, you would have one liter. And so that's what we have here. For every 1,000 milliliters, we get one liter. So let's see what those units do now. The unit of grams we said canceled, so we're in moles. And the units of mils cancel, and so we're in liters moles over liters, which is what we uh, wanted to end with. So we just have to do the math, which gives us uh, about 1.13 uh, molar, moles over one liter, or you could say 1.13 big M molar calcium chloride. So here's the solving process, written a little neater than I did. All right, let's try this one. And again, uh, try it and uh, pause this recording. Try it and then come back and, and check your work and see if you got the correct answer. So remember, we're going to set this uh, equation up so that we're going to end up with moles over liters. And so we're given grams and we're given cubic centimeters. So let's write that up as that ratio. Put that three, 39 0.8 grams of lead to chloride. So again, you have to remember how to write your formula. When you see a number in Roman numerals and parentheses, that tells you the oxidation state of the uh, metal. So lead two means that lead has a plus two oxidation number. Chlorine, you go over and you look in group uh, 17 and you see it's a minus one. So we're gonna do our crisscross for every one lead you're gonna need two chlorine. And so that's how we're gonna write lead two chloride. So you've got 39.8 grams of lead two chloride, and it is dissolved in a total amount of 250 cubic centimeters of solution. So we gotta get out of grams and get it into moles. We gotta get out of cubic centimeters and get it into liters. So go to your periodic table and find the mass of one mole of lead two chloride. So you look up lead, lead has a mass of 207.2. We've got two chlorines, each one is 35.5. So two times 35.5 plus that 207.2 gives us a total mass of about 278.0 uh, grams of lead two chloride in one mole. So now our grams unit, if we go back and look, the grams unit is going to cancel here. That one's gone, and this one's gone. And we're in moles over cubic centimeters, so we're almost there. We wanna get in moles over liters. So now let's take care of this volume. So remember what we said about cubic centimeters and milliliters, if you had one cubic centimeter, it would have the same uh, uh, vo unit volume or uh, measured volume as one milliliter. So 250 cubic centimeters is the same as 250 milliliters but we can do those conversions, and we can see that one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. Now, a cubic centimeters is canceled, and we're in grams, or sorry, moles per mil, 
we know that if we have a thousand milliliters, that's one liter. So let's go back and check those units and see how they canceled. So cubic centimeters over cubic centimeters cancels, and milliliters over milliliters cancel. And the last units we have left are moles over liters, and so we've set that up correctly. So now all we have to do is do the math. So once you do the math, multiply across the top and divide across the bottom, uh, we end up with 0.573 moles of lead to chloride in a total amount of one liter of solution. Or you could also say uh, it is 0 0.573 big M molar lead to chloride. And that means the same as this here, 0 .7, uh, 0 0.573 moles in one liter. So those are equivalent. So now we're going to see how you can make a solution. Um, if you're in the laboratory and someone says, oh, you know, I need a 1.5 molar solution of sodium hydroxide. Well, how would you make that? So we know that that term molar means moles of solute over liters of solution. Um, so if you had a 1.5 molar solution of sodium hydroxide, you'd need 1.5 moles of sodium hydroxide in a total volume of one liter. So let's try this. How would you prepare a one, one liter of a 1.5 molar solution of glucose? So we're given that concentration and we said that it is 1.5 moles of glucose in a total uh, volume of one liter. So we um, need to know then how many grams of glucose that is because we've got the glucose, which is just the table sugar in the lab. So we need to know how, much, how many grams do we need to have dissolved in that one liter to give us that molarity. So we've got to convert moles of glucose into grams. And this is the, uh, one of those values I told you at the beginning of the semester. It's good to learn <laughs> the glucose because it, it's 180. It's hard to go back and uh, math out C6H1206. We just say it's 180 grams of glucose is in one mole, so grams per mole. So let's uh, start out with our 1.5 mole of glucose. And uh, that's going to be in one liter. So we got to get out of moles of glucose because we need to know how many grams because remember our balances don't measure in moles. We have to convert it. So off the periodic table, we know if we had one mole of glucose, it would have a mass of 180 grams of glucose. So we multiply that 1.5 moles times 180 grams, and that gives us uh, 270 uh, grams of glucose. Okay, so here's the amount of glucose we need what do we have to do with it? So it seems to say that we're going to take uh, 270 grams of glucose in, uh, we're going to take a liter of water and we're going to take that 100, 270 grams of glucose and put it into that liter. But there's a problem with that. Um, remember, in order to figure out the volume of certain things, we could do something called water displacement. So if we were to take uh, a certain amount of water and drop an object in it, and so here's an example, they dropped a rock in there, the volume is going to change. So we will no longer have this volume, so say this was maybe 50 mils, now it's going to be a different volume, so maybe it's 75 mils. And that's how we find the, uh, the volume of that irregular solid. So same thing, if we took one liter of, solu of water and say it's one liter, and then we take that 270 grams of glucose and we dump it in there, it's going to change the volume. And so remember, in order for it to be molarity, it has to be moles of solute over one liter. So if we dump that into that one liter, it's not one liter anymore. It's one plus certain amount of, of, of volume. So we have a problem with that. We have to figure out a way to have this 270 grams of glucose, but it can only occupy 
this one liter total volume. So if you think about it, if you wanted to uh, take a, a bath and you wanted to have as much water in that bathtub as possible, you want to be all the way covered. So you get that bathtub and you fill it all the way up with water, all the way to the top, and then you try to get into it. Uh, what's going to happen is this water is going to spill out all over the floor and your mom's going to be mad. So how could you have a bath and have that tub as full of water as it possibly could be? Well, if you got into the tub first and then started to fill it, then when it got to the top, you would have as much water as you could without displacing any of it from your body. So we have to phrase our answer to take that problem into consideration. So instead of taking that 270 grams of glucose and adding it to one liter, because we know it won't be one liter anymore, we're gonna take that 270 grams of glucose and put it in the container first. Then we're gonna to start to add the water until it gets to one liter. That would give us the correct molarity of solution. So when you uh, figure out the grams of your solute, you would phrase it, add enough water to 270 grams of glucose to make one liter solution. So just like you, get into the bathtub first and add the water until it gets to the tippy top. Then we don't have to change the volume. So let's look at this example. Um, describe the preparation of the following solution. We want to make um, 1,000 cubic centimeters of 3 molar nickel 2 chloride. So we need to know how many grams of nickel 2 chloride there is going to be in that total volume. So let's get out of moles of nickel 2 chloride into grams. And so remember that 2 after a metal tells you that we're going to look at the plus 2 oxidation state of a nickel. And chlorine we know is a minus 1. And so nickel 2 chloride is going to be NiCl2. So let's get out of moles. So 3.00 mole of NiCl2. And we want to get into grams. So we have to look in, on the periodic table for the mass of 1 mole of nickel 2 chloride. And when we do, it comes up to be 129.6 grams. So now the moles of nickel 2 chloride are gone. So now we're in grams. So let's figure out how many grams that is. So we're going to take 3 times 129.6. And that gives us about 389 grams of nickel 2 chloride. So now we have to phrase this. This is how many grams of, of the solute we need, but we only want this much of the solution total. So we would have to say, add enough water to uh, that 389 grams of nickel 2 chloride to make that 1,000 cubic centimeters. So here it is. So again, we would say add enough water to 388.8 grams of nickel 2 chloride to make that 1,000 cubic centimeters. So in this case, the 1,000 cubic centimeters, we know that this is the same as 1 liter. Um, you could say it either way because we know that molarity is, the, is that moles per liter and 1,000 cubic centimeters is also a liter. So we didn't have to adjust that volume. Now this setup's a little trickier. Uh, instead of having a full liter, uh, sometimes you don't need that much. You know, if someone uh, just needed maybe about five mils of a 1.5 molar solution of sodium uh, hydroxide, you wouldn't want to have to make a full liter of it because that's a lot of waste. So sometimes you just need a certain amount. So in this case, it's asking for uh, 125 mils of this solution. So remember, in math, of means times. So I'm going to start with the volume that I want, that 125 milliliters. And I'm going to multiply it by this molarity. So 0 0.5 big M means 0 0.5 moles in one liter. So I'm going to write it that way. So 0 0.5 mole of sodium chloride in one liter. 
So we only want this much of that. So let's see how to make it. So remember, we need to get out of moles of sodium chloride into grams. So we need to know the mass of one mole of sodium chloride. And we've seen that uh, before. It's 57.5 grams of sodium chloride. So let's see what we've got so far. Our moles cancel. And right now we're in mils, liters, grams. So now we have to correct for this volume. We don't want a volume. We want to know how many grams. This is what your uh, uh, question is asking. How many grams? It doesn't say anything about the volume. So let's get rid of mils and liters. And we'll just use that conversion factor. We know that if you have 1,000 milliliters, that's one mil. So mils is on the top here. So let's get rid of it by putting it on the bottom. 1,000 milliliters. And liters is on the bottom. So let's get rid of it by putting it on the top. Now let's go back through and see how the units cancel. Mills are gone, liters are gone, moles are gone, and we end up with grams. So let's do the math. And when we do, we come up with uh, 3.65 grams of sodium chloride. So we have to phrase that again. We can't say 3.65 grams of sodium chloride in 125 mils. We have to phrase it so that we take that volume into consideration. So add enough water to 3.65 grams to make 125 mils a solution. And that would be the proper way of, of uh, phrasing that. Let's do one more practice before we finish up. Uh, let's say again, describe the preparation of, let's say we want to make um, 150 uh, cubic centimeters of a, whoops, of a uh, 2.0 molar solution of calcium chloride. All right, so Remember, of means time, so we're going to start with the volume that we're given. We're given 150 cubic centimeters of this concentration, 2.0 moles of calcium chloride in one liter of solution. So our goal is to find out how many grams. So how many grams of calcium chloride are going to be in that total volume. So that means we have to get rid of the volumes and we have to get out of moles into grams because our answer should just be grams. All right, so let's take care of the, you can take care of the volumes next if you want to or get out of moles into grams. Let's uh, get rid of the volumes. So we have to know um, the, ratio, the ra relationship between cubic centimeters and liters. So remember, we know that one cubic centimeter is equal to one mil. If you have a thousand mils, that's one liter. So if you have a thousand cubic centimeters, that's also one liter. So let's get rid of those volumes. Since I'm in cubic centimeters on the top, I want to get out of cubic centimeters by dividing them. And liters is on the bottom, so I want to get it onto the top to, to uh, cancel it out. So what do you know about cubic centimeters and liters right here? We know that if you had one liter, it's a thousand cubic centimeters. Now let's see what's happening to the units. Cubic centimeters has divided out, so it's gone. Liters has divided out and it's gone. And now we're in moles, almost there. We don't want moles, we want to know how many grams. So we have one more step to take. We need to find the mass of one mole of calcium chloride. And so we have to find the mass of calcium and two times the mass of chlorine. It comes out to be 111.0 grams. All right, so now moles has canceled out too. And our last standing unit is grams. And that's what we're trying to find out, how many grams. So let's do the math. So we multiply 150 times 2 times 111, equal that out, divide it by 1,000, and our answer comes out to be 33.3 grams of calcium chloride. All right, 
So now we have to phrase that. We can't um, add that 33.3 grams of calcium chloride to that 150 cubic centimeters because then we won't have that volume anymore. It'll be a different volume. So we have to phrase it to say, add enough water to this 33.3 grams of calcium chloride to make 150 cubic centimeters of solution. So I'll have you do that molarity practice. I'll put it in the Google Classroom for you. Work through those problems, and then I will give you a uh, video key uh, later to work through each one of those with you.